Not so pale. You're on it. Today, snow is crippling much of the Washington lowlands. One of the reason you just saw that clip is because we'll be talking a lot about Mark Miller in this video, and it just seemed right. I know for a fact that I'm not alone in feeling that Miller hates Canada. He even made a public statement recently in which he said he's tired of people blaming immigrants for everything. Let's play devil's advocate for a sec. I mean, he's not entirely wrong. The situation we find ourselves in is, is by no means the fault of immigrants. The fault can be spread around several channels. Let's start with the liberal government's share of the fault. I'm not even going to put the full blame for the government's part on Miller. Even that wouldn't be fair. His predecessor, Sean Fraser, shares a large part of that blame. And here's something I know a lot of people watching this channel won't like to hear, but it's a fact. This problem we're facing today started under Stephen Harper's watch. 2013 is when this all began. So what exactly is the Liberals' part in this fiasco? When it was discovered that immigration had allowed for over 100,000 immigrants to come into Canada in a single quarter at the height of a housing crisis, the Liberals realized they were going to have to dial things back. Despite their attempts to throttle the flow, however, the Liberals still ushered in the lost Canadians' effort to award citizenship to people who are as far as three times removed from their Canadian grandparents. In that same time period, Miller also saw to fast-tracking the entry of caregivers into the country. The Liberals know full well what it is they're doing. They know that Canadians are fed up with mass, unchecked immigration. So why would they keep doing it? Because immigrants, especially cheap labor, are very lucrative for a government's bottom line. You're essentially watching a giant social Ponzi scheme playing out in real time. Canada's middle and working classes are getting milked for their quality of life, all in the name of accommodating new arrivals who will add new revenue to government coffers. This brings us to the next group of people we can blame for Canada's immigration train wreck. That would be the unscrupulous immigration consultants who will do anything for a buck. When I see these guys, the first person who pops in my mind is Better Call Saul. I can't help but believe that immigration programs like the Caregiver and Lost Canadian initiatives are deliberately packed with loopholes. And once those loopholes are exploited by these unscrupulous immigration consultants, Miller can just shrug it off for the camera and blame them. And now I'm going to run some footage of various immigration consultants promoting their scams on social media. So grab your popcorn. Good morning friends, uh, hope you're doing well. This is Gagan from Manhattan and Immigration. Uh, we recently got approval for our client. He visited here as a visitor visa and he, now we get him approved for the study permit. Congratulations, Pramit. Thank you. Now, where is your study permit? Please share your comments with us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, myself, Gagan from Manhattan and Immigration. Uh, today, my friend Meet uh, Patel is here. He came here as a visitor visa and uh, today he got his approval. Uh, congratulations, me. Uh, this is your approval for your study permit. Can you say something? Anything, like in English, in Gujarati, anything you can say for our services and uh, anything for our company. Thank you to Bhavandeep sir. He got me a visitor visa to, uh, he converted my visitor visa to study permit and thank you. No worries. Uh, if you or any of your friend is uh, in the same situation, please do visit us and uh, we'll make sure you get uh, approved from us. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. A lot of you guys ask that my PGWP is expiring. Is there any way for me to extend? I cannot get an LMIA. Is there any other way? The only ways are usually either an LMIA or you have a PNP or AIP nomination or you have a PR application or a process. However, there is one more exemption that you can avail. If you don't have any PR in the process, you don't have an LMIA, you have no other way of extending your work permit, but you have an employer at the moment, the C16 Francophone Mobility Exemption Code. You just need a job offer and you need basic knowledge of French. You need to show CLB5 in French. If you are able to show that, yes, then you can extend your postgraduate work permit without an LMIA, without any PR application. So in today's scenario where you are struggling to meet the requirements for PR program and work permits are expiring and your employer is refusing to give you an LMIA, but you have some French or you are able to learn French, then you can explore this program. This is by far the easiest at the moment to extend your work permit without meeting other requirements. You may have seen our videos on the caregiver program, which usually opens once a year. With this very program, you can invite your brothers or sisters to take care of your family in Canada. They only need one year of education after high school and they need CLB level of just five 
in English proficiency. And today, Minister Mark Miller is expected to announce some changes to the caregiver program. He might make the existing caregiver pilot program a permanent one, or they may introduce some changes and improvised version of this very program. And according to the Globe and Mail reports, the new improved uh, version of the caregiver program may give caregivers a new pathway to permanent residency as soon as they arrive in Canada. And Canada plans to accept over 15,000 caregivers as a permanent residence in the next two years according to the IRCC. And don't forget to comment caregiver below to receive a video on this topic. And finally, we have the third group you can blame for this, the visa scammers. I'm talking about the ones who come to Canada under a false pretense like studying. I'm telling you now, if there's a loophole to be exploited, you can count on these scammers to find it. It now seems like the provinces will have to deal with this problem on their own, just as we've seen Francois Legault do this week. Legault squeezed Trudeau for three quarters of a billion dollars to compensate Quebec for bearing such a heavy burden of Canada's immigration. BC Premier David Eby wasn't too happy to hear about Quebec's news as BC is shouldering a huge burden of its own. They're bringing in 10,000 immigrants every 37 days and they're not getting any support from Ottawa. And as of the time I'm producing this video, PI is holding its line and has successfully pushed away a massive chunk of the fake students leeching off their resources. So until we get a government that can run the show without Ponzi schemes, until employers stop being too cheap to pay a decent living wage, until we arrest and prosecute the fake immigration consultants helping these scammers game the system, and until we get dead serious about entry requirements and facilitating deportations, we need to do our part to keep the powers that be in check. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing.